And I don't want you guys to brush it off as simply a case of the winter blues and you just got to push your way through it. I want to give you some helpful tips, some helpful tips and suggestions that you can take to help just really combat the winter blues so you can get through this season um, just with flying colors and still keep your bloom alive even though uh, the days are going to be shorter and you won't have these picture perfect days like we had today. So um, again, seasonal affective disorder is a subtype of major depression. Now, if you're someone who gets seasonal affective disorder, it does not mean that you have a diagnosis of major depression. Again, it's just a subtype of depression. Um, and some of the symptoms, as I mentioned before, but I'll go through a few more symptoms of seasonal affective disorder are irritability. So if you find yourself more irritable lately, or you're more irritable toward the people in your life, your significant other, your partner, your children, um, your friends, your coworkers, uh, maybe the telemarketer on the phone, although it doesn't take a change in seasons for that to happen. But if you find yourself more irritable lately or more tired or less energy, I know I've been feeling that way. And I even um, mentioned it to my husband the last few days, like, I am so tired. And I was wondering, because I know I did a little bit more running than I usually do this week, but it wasn't that much more. And I think it's really related more so to this change in the season. If you find yourself feeling that low energy or tiredness, it could very well be that you're starting to get the effects of the seasonal affective disorder. If you are having problems getting along with other people, whoever that may be, or if you find yourself more hypersensitive than you typically are, or um, even hypersensitive to rejection or criticism more so than usual. Um, if you have just even a heaviness, a feeling of heaviness, sometimes you may just feel a heaviness just in your limbs, like it's just hard to get up and move around. Uh, if you find yourself oversleeping, or even after a full eight hours of sleep, or I know a lot of us don't get the eight hours of sleep, but if, if you get your typical hours of sleep in and you're still finding yourself feeling tired, um, also with seasonal affective disorder, there can be appetite changes, and that can get a lot of us in trouble in the winter. You know how a lot of folks put on their winter weight, but the appetite changes, and if any of you guys are experiencing that, you know, you can let me know or put some hearts up there, let me know, but Appetite changes, is, it's just a common um, symptom of seasonal affective dis disorder, especially craving foods high in carbohydrates. So craving like your breads, your pastas, your sweets, your sugary foods. And it's a real reason why you do that because it gives you that, that quick burst of energy the carbohydrates do. Um, but unfortunately, even with that, oftentimes it leads to weight gain. So weight gain is a real another symptom that's usually present in seasonal affective disorder. Um, and seasonal affective disorder, now, it's, like I said, very common, very common, especially for people who live in the northern hemispheres. So us who are far away from the equator um, tend to have more symptoms of seasonal affective disorders than others because we're getting less sunlight. You know, it's, it, even though the specific cause of seasonal affective disorder is still kind of unknown. They can't pinpoint what really causes it. They know that there are a lot of factors that go into the change of the seasons, of course. So our, our circadian rhythm, our, or what we call our biological clock often, is um, off, off um, just off balance because of the lack of sunlight and the level of sunlight that has now lessened from the summer and winter months. They believe that that can be uh, very well um, a cause in the onset of seasonal affective disorder. This decrease in sunlight may disrupt your internal clock, again, disrupting your, your sleep-wake cycle. And so, again, when you wake up in the morning and it's still dark out, you just don't feel like getting out of that bed. And you even think about it. You think about even the springtime when the weather starts changing in the spring and it starts getting late, um, light out at 5.30 in the morning, 6 a.m. in the morning, and we just jump out of the bed because we feel great. Well, things are changing because we're in October, and those of you who are in, you know, the northern states here or northeast or, you know, further from the equator than others, you're feeling the effects a lot now. As I said, you're getting up and it's dark in the morning to go to work, and you're coming home and it's dark, and it's going to get darker, so that could definitely affect you. Another um, cause could be the... Um, Serotonin levels, you know, that's that feel-good chemical in the brain that keeps our mood well. You know, that's the, mood, the chemical that is associated with our mood. And people
people who suffer from depression, and we said seasonal affective disorder is a subtype of a depression, tend to have lower levels of serotonin. So the belief is this time of the year, it affects your ser um, the, the change and shift in just the sunlight and the, the seasons affect your serotonin. Um, so that's a real, a real potential cause to why all of that is going on. Um, and the melatonin levels as well. And we know melatonin plays a role in our sleep patterns and our, our mood. So seasonal affective disorder is real. It's not in your head. If you're having any of these symptoms that I talked about, it's definitely, it's definitely could be a sign that you are um, experiencing the onset of seasonal affective disorder. Some risk factors, and I'm gonna get to what you can do to just really combat this and to not have to deal with the seasonal affective disorder or lessen the effect in your life in a second. But I wanna talk about even some risk factors. So being female, this week I focused um, in Mental Illness Awareness Week on specifically women and seasonal affective disorder uh, affects women more so than men. Now men are affected as well. And some of you guys may have men in your life that are discussing how they're feeling more tired or, and, and tend to get tired this time of the year, which is a pattern. So, but it affects more women than men and women tend to have more severe symptoms. Also uh, family history. So people with seasonal affective disorder are most likely to have blood relatives with seasonal affective um, disorder or another form of um, depression. Or if you are somebody who's already got a diagnosis of clinical depression or bipolar depression, um, the change in the seasons, the seasonal affective disorder may affect you uh, more often as well. And as I said before, living far away from the equator plays a role. Uh, people who are further away from the equator, us in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm here in Michigan, um, because now it's a decreased sunlight during the winter and longer winter months, um, as opposed to the longer days we had just a few months ago and those summer months we're going to miss. So what can you do? What can you do? If you're experiencing any of these things I talked about, increased in irritability, mood symptoms, um, and I see Viva LeBron says she never knew this was a real thing, but it's good information. And it is a real thing. It's a true diagnosis, seasonal affective disorder. I'm glad that you're getting this information and share it with friends as well. Um, but if you're experiencing these things, these feelings such as feeling down or having a lack of energy, any type of depression, sometimes it's good to even get uh, uh, and go to your doctor and, and get a physical, get a physical, make sure all your levels are well. One of the things that they're finding more and more, especially with African Americans and people of color, is during the winter months, our vitamin D levels plummet, it plummets. Um, and that can have a real effect on all of those symptoms we talked about. I see Carla Elaine is saying her father deals with this disorder. It's real. And I know this time of the year, Carla, you're probably even seeing these symptoms come out more so um, with your dad because this is right at that time where you start seeing these symptoms. Um, so you can, again, like I said, go and speak with your doctor. Go talk to your doctor, get blood tests to make sure your vitamin D levels, make sure your iron levels, make sure all those other things that can mimic these symptoms are on par because oftentimes there are people, my husband is one of them, he has to take vitamin D in the winter time because his levels plummet, his levels really plummet because we're not getting that sun. You know, if you're fortunate enough to be somebody who can be a snowbird and leave the snowy cold states um, that experience winter the harshest and go to the sunny area someplace closer to the equator, you're good. But most of us, we have to get through it and we have to bear through it. So it's good to just go and get a exam, get an exam from your uh, physical doctor, your attending physician, and make sure that all of your levels are well and check that just to rule out all of those type of symptoms as well, lab test, physical exam, and sometimes even get a psychological evaluation, again, to just make sure that there isn't any more serious uh, serious things going on with you. Now, I see Lupus Detroit chimed in. Great to have you guys here. Um, but some other things people do is light therapy. They call it phototherapy. So there are special lights you can buy and light boxes that people can buy these locks, lights and plug them up and sit next to these lights while you're watching television, while you're, you know, um, while you're just do sitting down, 
Uh, you can even get these lights. You can order them online. And I think Home Depot, if I'm not mistaken, in the last few years have started selling them. It's probably, again, like I said, in the northern states because it's more common here. You can even get a prescription from your doctor for a light box. I remember years ago writing a prescription for a patient of mine for a light box. And it was covered by her insurance when she went and purchased it because she suffers um, from seasonal affective disorder every year. Um, some other things you can do in including the light therapy. Um, sometimes people have to take medications throughout those winter months. Now, I'm not someone that just pushes medications on unnecessarily, but if it gets so serious that you're having some complications, like you can't get out of a bad suicidal thoughts or behavior, social withdrawal, or you can't seem to get to work, Maybe you need to go and get a psychiatric or psychological evaluation to make sure that you don't need medication to just bring your serotonin levels back um, to a, a, a normal level for you. Um, and psychotherapy. This time of the year, I my client load increases. So, and that's a good thing. And these could be clients that I've seen off and on for years, but they function well throughout the year and they just find it harder this time of the year to get through day-to-day, -day, typical day-to-day -day activities, and they find coming and just really getting back in therapy for the winter months is really helpful for them to um, just keep that depression and those symptoms of depression and seasonal affective disorder at bay. And they, I see all the hearts coming, so I know this is really resonating with a lot of you guys who are feeling this this time of the year. So some other home remedies and lifestyle remedies that you can do. And I want to tell you guys, this is so important. Make your environment sunnier and brighter. So whenever, like today, if you're in the uh, metropolitan Detroit area like I am, we had an absolutely like picture perfect, beautiful fall day. And I hear we're having another one tomorrow. Open up your blinds, open up your curtains, let that sun come in. You got to make your environment sunnier and brighter. Turn on lights in your home if you have to. One of the worst things you can do when you're experiencing seasonal affective disorder is just is, is to sit in darkness, sit in darkness. So even in the evening, even if you're somebody who typically likes to watch television in the dark, I'm not that type of person. I just like light all around me. But if you're that type of person, Turn on the lights instead, especially in the winter months, because it's good. Or like I said, get a light box and sit next to you. Get outside just because it's going to be winter soon and the days are getting shorter. You can still get outside. Go for a walk, you know, when it's light outside, because even if the sun is not you know, at the intensity it's in in the summertime, there's still a benefit you can get, some vitamin D you can get um, just from the daylight. So get outside, take a walk, eat lunch at a nearby park, um, sit on a bench and soak up the sun. I took uh, my girls to lunch this afternoon and I told them the purposely, I told them, get a table. We sat in, I said, get a table near the window and the sun was just shining in and it was not it felt so good but it's like I want to soak it all in right now because it's so important and it really does have a physiological effect on you so even on cold or cloudy days outdoor light can help like I said so if you spend some time outside uh, during the day that can have a great impact on your mood so what I suggest you guys doing uh, for those of you who are in states where we really get hard, hit hard with the winter time, get yourself some a nice warm coat, get yourself some nice warm boots, and just make it a point to even get outside and walk around. You can still take walks in the winter time. Yeah, it's cold, but again, that's going to help. And this is one of the most important things is a lifestyle changes and home remedies you can take for seasonal affective disorder. Exercise regularly. Exercise regularly. Exercise and any other type of physical activity helps to relieve stress, anxiety, both of which can increase your seasonal affective uh, disorder symptoms. So, and even being more fit can make you feel better about yourself too. And also that exercise is going to help you, for those of us like myself, who this time of the year crave more carbs. Like I just, you know, you're craving more carby foods. Yesterday I cooked potatoes and I never cooked potatoes, you know, but I wanted some potatoes with the dish that I was um, cooking. So those of us who are finding ourselves craving more carbs, it's a good idea uh, to get out and just get some more exercise. Even if you're not craving more carbs, the exercise, what it does is it's going to increase just those feel good chemicals up here in our brain. And it's just going to have effect, a, a natural 
physiological effect on our mood and make us feel better, make us feel better. So find an exercise partner. I tell people all the time, find somebody who you can be your accountability partner throughout these winter months who's going to call you and say, hey, let's go to the gym or let's um, get together and take a walk. You, Those of you who have pets, great excuse, get outside. Don't just take them outside to relieve themselves, but take them for a walk. Um, still get in nature, even though we're going to see a lot of things dying off. We see the leaves falling off the trees. We see the flowers dying now. There's still nature around us in the winter time. So find some appreciation in that nature. Find some appreciation in the, um, find some appreciation even in the winter nature that exists out there. So get yourself out there and just appreciate that. Um, you may not be much of a skier or a sledder or, you know, I know people who go uh, tobogganing in the winter time. That may be something to think of. Just bundle yourself up so you stay warm. But any activity that you can engage yourself in is going to be beneficial to you just keeping these seasonal affective symptoms at Bay, and that's what we want to do. So again, thank you guys for joining me this week for Mental Illness Awareness Week. We're wrapping it up tonight, but I, I ask you guys to follow me on Periscope, like my YouTube page, where I'll be putting up more videos as it relates to mental well-being, health, personal transformation, and living your life in full bloom. Um, I want to just Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart because I really always appreciative when you join me in this and share this information, share this information with family and friends. Um, and if you just want readings good in the winter time too, because that's a great escape. And if you want a good book to read, try Bloom Seven Steps to Personal Transformation or my book, uh, My Fight for Air, good fiction book as well. Both of my books can be found either on my website, drrosemolton.com, or you can go to Amazon and find both books as well. But continue to follow me throughout the winter months. We're going to get through it together. So join the Facebook family, the Transformation Tuesday with Dr. Rose family. Follow me on Periscope. And guys, I guarantee you that I'll be helping you guys get through this winter month. Keep those symptoms at bay and we'll all be ready to bloom when the springtime comes. See you all again. Bye-bye.